quickly. We start off, we have our barrel board. First off, I prefer the silver. This is copper. The silver stuff tends to, uh, it's basically, it's the copper stuff that has an extra light layer of silver. So it's less prone to lifting. It's more sturdy. Paste flux. Paste flux. Paste flux. Paste flux. And I'm not going to get into that. If you immediately start to think there's a check in your mind now, I'm not going to get the... My solder already has the flux in it. Please go somewhere else. Click off of this right now. And if you're going to stay, get some paste flux. You will never solder without it. Seriously, that's the, that's the answer to soldering. Why your solder isn't sticking? Because you didn't put flux on it. I flux everything that I solder. Everything. And then I remove it. I use rubbing alcohol and I use a toothbrush. Now, to cut my barrel, I have a thick, ooh, a thick carpet cutter blade. Okay? So oftentimes I will cut the board. I am not concerned with a 1590A tiny build. If you measure them, they are wider with the Jackson than a 125B. I build in 125B. All three, the, the input, the output, and the power jack fit on the ass end of a 125B. So I'm not worried about putting an extra row around my Vero where it says 10 by 8. I will make it 11 by 9. 11 by 10 even, an extra row on both sides. And that gives me wiggle room if it peels, if the traces lift on the end. Uh, to put an extra ground in, we have extra rolls going on both sides. So I find that that can really be helpful. And for mods. You can use those extra rolls for whatever you want. Uh, but it, that's up to you. Uh, I will tape around the extra rolls with masking tape on both sides of the board. And that gives me a spot to use a fine point sharpie. If I want, I can write out one, two, three, four, five, or just mark every five. And I find that to work for me. So in my computer, I have installed Earthran View. That's image viewing software. So when I have the image of the uh, layout up, I can hit H and it flips it horizontally. So when I install my, when I do the cuts, the first thing you do is like, I do a paper bomb, I list everything out. Then I, uh, I tape it out, I cut the board out. I will sand the edges of the board because they're usually kind of sharp. Try not to inhale that, it's toxic stuff for when we've got the board looking at it, just how we're gonna actually do the cuts. And I find that flipping the image and flipping the board to eliminate error. I will take a red sharpie and I will go, okay, one, two, I'm in the second row, and then one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D, I'm in D, and I will mark that with the marker. So then, okay, I put the other, there's two more cuts, I put the other two cuts in where they're supposed to be, and then I get done, I put my marker back, and then I stop, and I double check my work before I cut. Oh, I made a mistake. The second ones I have off by one whole row. Cause I goofed. I goofed. I goofed. So then I can just take my rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. I feel like carrot top here. This type of drill bit has a chuck octagonal block of steel on it. That's what I hold, hold on to and I find that to work better than... You can use whatever you want. That's a mini hand drill that has a chuck on it. For the jumper wires, you can use your 22 gauge wire, whatever you want. As far as wire goes, this is the bag of wires that I use for pedals. They're pre tinned because I removed them. That comes out of these printer boxes. This one has been repainted. Uh, this is an amp that I built, uh, but that's a, it's a box that I get from Goodwill for like two or three bucks and it'll have a big knob like, you know, computer switch box and there'll be some big parallel port jacks back. So that's how I get my wire. Or you can order wire like this, little bundles of pre tinned wire or just use your own 22 gauge. Now what I find is running the, uh, the jumpers, if you're gonna, and if there is a chip on the board, the chip socket is not really gonna wanna sit very well on top of those wires that they run underneath it. And I just don't, I don't like jumpers. Jumpers are, it's just part of the job that I abhor. So what I found is this is a spool of coil wire. And this is, it's got a thin plastic coating on it so uh the solder doesn't really want to stick to it so to remedy that you just saw it flare up that's the plastic burning off this is the wire that i use for my jumpers and i really i really like using this wire so any small transform anything you could take apart you can get this wire from recycling whatever wire you choose try to get some really thin small stuff for your jumpers i like to use a couple a couple different colored sharpies and we see that the first resistor is in the second row 
and there's one row on the bottom up, okay? And it's a one, two, three, four, okay? So I will go at that starting point and put a dot here. And then I will go one, two, three, that's the where it ends, and put another dot. And then I can lightly draw a line in between there. And then uh, what's on top of that is the transistor socket. So I'll just go one, two, three, and then it's the top. So go, okay, row two, starting from the bottom. There's a four gap, and there's a one M on the fifth row. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, and I'll put the mark on five. There's that one M. It's a three. One, two, three. Ooh, stand-up resistor. I don't like those. And I'll put the marker in there and keep going. You can use different colored markers to represent, but I find you don't really need to do that. Once you start going and the board's already marked, you can look at the board and you'll see where the line is, and you'll look at the layout and you go, oh yeah, that's the 4.7K. And it's per everything's perfect. Because you pre-marked it. So this eliminates room for error because you're always double-checking your work. So it tends to go really fast at that point. It's all this prep and kind of futzing around and taking a long time. But once you have, if you've pre-pulled the parts and you've got them all laid out, and, you know, I tend to test my resistors before I go in and make, really make sure everything is good. And then at that point, it really, the, the work starts going fast and you get done. And next thing you know, you're connecting the wires. So that's really how I do it. I use this flux. I'll, you can, you know, you've got the resistor in and the leads are sticking up. I'll put a little tiny bit of flux using this WD-40. This is paste flux, 99 cents for a syringe tube of it on eBay. I'll put a little bit on each of the leads and then I'll hold the iron on the top of both leads and it'll melt and just drip down and it'll go right around the, the holes where it needs to go. And then I'll put the iron down, let the board warm up, let the uh, lead from the resistor warm up, and then I'll take the solder in and I'll touch it lightly first to get it going on the iron right at the tip, right where they all three meet, and that'll start it flowing and then I'll just add a little bit more. You just want a small amount of solder, just enough to cover the hole. And then uh, you don't want it blobbed out. And if you use that flux, you'll see it just it sticks like that. It helps with the wetting action, and that's the molecular. Where everything's clean, there's no oxidation. That's why the solder doesn't stick, just because it's oxidized surface of the steel. So that flux is acid, and it eats away and preps. It strips just the surface layer off. So then, you know, I'll go in. These are excellent snips. These are whatever you got, your Harbor Freight, Orangies, whatever. You'll go in and clip it off. Be careful with these. If you get these, these are two, these are great, but they're so sharp, they're so flat, you'll cut some of the... You'll cut the top of the solder off if you go in too deep, but it makes for a nice flat board too, using these. So you go in and cut everything off. The capacitors, there's really no trick except for making sure that you're, you got the polarities in, same with the you know, diodes. I'm thinking the chip socket. They're really, it's all the same stuff. You put, drop them in, add you know, uh, this flux. You can use a, I have a syringe here with a lure lock tip with flux in it. That's kind of a, I need to put a larger tip this is it's really hard to push through. I could take that off and nuke it, put it in a paper bag, standing up and nuke, nuke it for 10 seconds till this turns liquid. But, you know, keep your sponge wet, use a holder, get, get a proper iron. Like I have a very fine tip on my soldering iron. This is a imitation Hayco I paid 10 bucks for. I love this iron. It's got an adjuster here. It says it's 60 watts. It's not. It's like 30. But the fine point tip works really well on here. So once, once you get going and you're using flux, you'll find that your life is really easy. The solder just goes to where it needs to go and sticks like a charm. So when I have it done, it's covered in flux. So I will take my, uh, like literally there's flux everywhere. You need to wash your hands so it's toxic stuff. Um, use a, a filter device, a fan at least, because you don't want to be inhaling the smoke. There's more smoke when you're using the flux. So I have this here, it's rubbing alcohol, 90%. I'll just hose the board down. I, I won't put the chip in or the transistor because it's just going to get wet for no reason. I don't really think that matters, but I'll go ahead and hose this board down, and then I will remove all the debris. And when I'm done with that, I have this tool. You could just as well, I find the, a dental pick works very well. This tool is made for doing this job. It's got a little anvil end, like a sharpened regular screwdriver, and on the other side is a, a brush, a wire brush. But this tool here, this anvil end, like a, it's like if you took a regular screwdriver and ground it down to a point, kind of sharp, you, I run that through each one of the tracks, and that will make sure that if there's any, if it's bridged, if the solder went and two rows are connected where they're not supposed to be, it'll stop. And you'll go, oh, even with bad eyesight, you can tell if you have any bridges. Or there'll be a little ball of de solder debris stuck between two mounds of solder. This will knock it out. So you run through with this, you can scrub it with that. I, what I find is these dollar store you can get, you get a, a heavy duty uh, a plastic 
bristle brush, and then a silver one, and then a brass one. These, the metal ones, you scrub it after it's, you've done the alcohol, and you do this again, and it'll look, it's like shining, like this, cut, it cuts a little bit of the metal off. It makes it look really great. And this is great for visibility, for putting, if you have a high power flashlight, to be able to see, this is another wonderful tool, or if you have some kind of a magnification lamp. But at that point, you'll be able to tell uh, if there's a problem even before you turn it on. So if you go through this process and clean your board, like if I skip that, it won't work. It never works. If you clean it, you'll always see something that's kind of needs to be addressed. But I got some of these. These are like Ophihemostat things, and these sit at an angle like this when you set them down. You can put a couple of wires in there or have it hold the board. But, um, for the wiring, like I said, uh, having an assist on that if you have a helper or something is nice. But typically, then for the pots, uh, there's a tab on the pot. I pre-crack that off. Uh, I'll remove the hardware. I keep a small, a, a larger shot glass type of thing. Throw, keep all the hardware in one place. And then uh, cut in each wire. I tend to put the wire in, get it so the uh, shielding is stuck up to where it's going to be. There's no gap. Where the wire is sticking out and then I will bend that over and then trim it so it's just a little bit of wire bent over and trimmed and then I will uh if the wire is always pre-tinned always pre-tinned wire and if you have a flux cup you can find you'll, you'll you can spin it out you can strip it you know I use a lighter I'll heat it up and then pull it off with my hand throw that away and then uh if there's a little booger hair sticking off I'll, I'll melt that again and that'll go back in and then I'll spin the wire in my hand cut the end off of it to get it to be the right size because you don't ever want to trim have a wire prepped and tin it if there's excess because then you're just wasting everything so you always snip it off and I forget to do that a lot that's why I was all put my finger <laughs> you stick the, the wire in the in the flux tub it gets a little flux on there and then I will tin that I will hit the iron and the excess I will do that over my flux cup and it'll drop the excess will drip back into the flux cup and then you have it tin. Stick it through the hole, make sure that it's snug so there's no space, bend it over, snip it if you need to, and then that's where it's nice to have a clip to have it hold it because if the wire moves, it'll it's going to cause problems. So you want, when you're doing this stuff, like using two of these, like the wires curled up, you need to get it where those two points that are going to meet, there's no stress on it. Like if the wire's curled, you can't have that other piece over here. It need, they need to, you need to set them where they like hold where they are at the top and then they'll curl like this and then drop them down on the desk. Then have these come in and clip them. And if they're already agreeable that they're in the spot where they need to be and there isn't any tension pulling them away from each other, your job's a lot easier. So working smart like that is gonna help you out a lot. Um, with the pots, I cut off that tab and then I will take my flux wand and apply that to all three and then take the iron, I will apply a drop of solder directly to the iron and drop it on there. Normally I don't do that where I'm carrying solder over, but on the pots that's the exception because uh, I'm just tinning it. And then they're tinned and again you can, if you're working on a board surface, like I tend to put cardboard down or I have a board that has another lip on it that lines up on top of the TV tray, you can drill a quarter inch holes around that board where you can drop your pot in there. The shaft sits in there and then it won't move. Then you can line your wire circuit up with the wire where let's say it's like all oh, like this and your pot is here with the wires the tab sticking out that way then you move the circuit board so where the wire is where it wants to go right on there and then your job is done It'll, you just you know so working smart like that is gonna make your life easier uh, you wire up the pots there's a whole nother thing i could go about like my beavis box that's it's just an input and an output jack with another little plate that has push spring terminals where you can take the input and output wires from the pedal and plug them in there um, and test it out. Uh, I use these PCBs from Vic Audio, but a lot of people sell them. But your stop switch goes in here. This has a hole big enough uh, for the stop switch to sit in. So I will hold it by hand. I will put this on here upside down and I'll solder one in the middle first. And once that's soldered, then I'll drop that on here so it sits flat and then I can go ahead and solder the rest of them and the, the switch is sitting just inside this hole. So that gives me a nice base, something to secure it. If you're doing true bypass pedals, get these PCBs. They're like a dollar each and everything's labeled. There's extra 9-volt ports on them. They're really wonderful. 
and there's a spot for the resistor for the LED, the, the uh, what do you call that, the current limiting resistor for the LED, and there's a spot for the LED. So these will make your life a lot easier. Plug a cable into here and plug it into an amp, a test amp. And then I will plug this onto the ground and then take the, this pen, there's a capacitor hidden in here. And you start at where the sound comes in. E, I got it, e, I got it, e, I got it, e, I got it. Like the other day I built a punch amp and I had it, every, there was no, it was going I'm like, this is starting to motor ball. There's something wrong. So I'm hitting, oh, I forgot to clean it, clean it. Oh no. Somebody, you could keep a knuckle, but you can't come in. So I'm going through and E, I got it on the input, E, I got it on the output, and then on the output of the chip, input of the chip, E, I got it there, E, E, and then I go to the output, nothing. So I'm like, it's got to be the chip. So I pop the chip out, put the new chip in, E, <laughs> it was the chip, I had a bad chip. The continuity test, which is the beep beep test, uh, after you do your jumpers, you can test the board to make sure that you're getting good contact all the way through the rails of the board. It has a 10x switch, so if I'm working and it's like, man, that's too loud, I can just hit that and it, it hits it and I'm like, you know what, I want to save my battery, I can shut it off and go back to doing my work and I'm like, oh, I think I fixed it. And for the test, you know, you could just momentarily hit it so your neighbors aren't hearing that. And then there's a volume pot on it too. This is RG Keen's Quick and Dirty Test Oscillator. You'll find once you have one of these test oscillators, I uh, say that 10 times fast, but you need to put jacks on both sides and get a bitches love my switches, uh, which this guy, check out his music. He's got this song called The Wrong Way. It's, all of his stuff is really good. And I like ordering from him too. Uh, if you need the pedal chassis or snap switches, this is the way to go. I'm sorry I went so fast and I'm sorry for the length of this video. There's just no way around it. It's, it's a lot of stuff that I learned over a long time. If you have any tips that you find are superior or just your way of doing things, feel free to leave those in the comments. That would be great for me to pick, to get something back, to learn something. I'm always, when somebody, like, I gotta thank Pink Jimmy Photon for telling me about the Earth Ramp View trick. For me, it's it's a lot of it is b before the, you even turn the soldering iron with the method that I use. I find that if you go through all the steps that I went through today, the chances of it working when you first turn it on, because Vero is a tricky animal. There's a lot that can go wrong, and if you just gonzo go at it and you're just fucking throwing the solder on there, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. And that that sucks. That really sucks when you put when you put power on it. And what I find is the ones that the Veros that don't work are the small ones. For me now, the tiny ones, like yesterday with that punch amp with the bad chip. Come on. P two finger. Signing off, go ahead and cuss me out and let me know how much of a bleep, 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 and bleep, and bleep. I need my bleep box here. I'll simulate the comments section. Hey, Petey, I made your, I watched your video, and... <laughs> Comment number two. Peace. Peace.